What's up guys and welcome to the channel and this is going to be our comprehensive Ford Bronco suspension review where we are going to compare and evaluate three popular aftermarket suspension brands Icon, Radflow and Keen. We're going to dive into key features, performance and the overall value that they offer for your Bronco. So let's get started. This is going to be an owner's perspective review to help you the buyer decide on which setup may work best for you. Now keep in mind that different mods, weights, and setups can alter your Bronco's performance. So consult your shop, Google, or the almighty forums to find out what works best for you guys. This is not a how to fit 37s video, but more of a comparison to show you guys the nitty gritty nuts and bolts features and off-road performance and on-road performance, as well as some tech specs for you geeks out there that like to get that stuff down. Now I also did a blind review of their customer service and called each company to get some tech specs for them the features, the performance they offer, and we got some surprising results from that. So stay tuned, let's get started. So some things we're gonna be doing in this video that I'd like to get started with. We're gonna do asphalt, we're gonna do some jumps, we're gonna do some rocks, we're gonna show you the CTI score of the Broncos at Metal Cloak CTI ramp, which is gonna be pretty cool. And we're gonna get you the owner's perspective from each owner of these individual Broncos about what they like and what they don't like about their individual builds. Now to get started, we're gonna talk about each build we have here, how they're set up, and what we've got going on. So let's, uh, let's get started. All right, guys, first up, we have Radflow. And for Radflow, we have Brandon. So Brandon, tell us about your build, sir. All right, so I got the Radflow extended travel coilovers, which is like a two and a half inch lift uh, with the uh, Camberg upper control arms. And um, for the steering, I've added the JKS steering sleeve. Um, and that's pretty much it for the uh, suspension. Um, it's running uh, 37, 12, 5, uh, KM3 tires on uh, Battleborn Sierra 17 by 9 wheels. Um. <laughs> okay, guys, next up we have Icon. And running Icon today, we have David. David, can you tell us a little bit about your build, sir? Yeah, thanks, Caleb. So, what we got going on here is we went with an Icon Stage 7. Uh, with the Icon, you're going to have all Icon parts from the coilovers through the upper control arms. When it came to putting tires on it, we went with Method 705s with the, greed, uh, the bead grip technology, as well as going then with the Neato Terra Grapplers for the tires. So as we go through this, we are sitting at everything and that being Icon, except for also for tire clearance, we also went with the JKS Max Tire Clearance Kit. And guys, here we have my very own Bronco representing Keen here today. We're going to see if it's really the Keen. I'm obviously not biased. so. This is what we got going on today with the Keen, all right? We got Icon tubular upper control arms. We have Keen adjustable suspension, full coilovers, guys, nothing more, nothing less. We have the Falcon Wild Peak 37 by 12.5 inch tires, all terrains, with the Sierra Battleborns. The Battleborn Sierras, guys, that's a truly awesome wheel. We have a JKS Max Tire Clearance Kit up front. And then in the rear, we have Metal Cloak's full upper and lower rear control arms with the track bar all tied together to give us what I believe is a truly beautiful rig that I love. Let's see how it does. Okay guys, and we also have another Icon contender just so we can get some different perspectives out there as well for you guys. And with our Icon stuff here, we have Tom. So Tom, can you tell me about your Icon setup and how it differs? Absolutely, so I've got the uh, Icon Stage 7 fully adjustable, Icon uh, tie rods. I have uh, stock wheels with spacers behind them because they will rub. Uh, metal cloak, rear control arms, upper, lower, and track bar. <laughs> and guys, we have the last but not least Radflow in the bunch. And driving this Radflow, we have Chris. So let's talk to Chris about what he has going on. Hi, Chris. Here you go. Hello. Uh, I have Radflow extended coilovers with reservoirs, uh, Icon tubular upper control arms, and tie rods, the JKS Chop Max Clearance Kit and rear metal cloak trailing arms. Uh, I also have the Bronco Buster steering bushing and I'm sitting on 37 inch Mickey Thompson Baja Boss MTs. He likes to go hard guys. And something I wanna point out really quick for all y'all, all these Broncos are gonna be at 20 PSI for the test. We have the adjusters all set to the same setting. We're gonna make this comparison as fair as we can. Obviously it's not gonna be perfect. All the Broncos differ slightly in weight, but we picked the Broncos that most resemble each other and their builds and how they set up against one another, we're gonna find out. And guys, 
just to add some flair to the mix to show how these aftermarket companies stand up against what possibly could be the true king here. We have a Raptor. We have a Ford Bronco Raptor. We have Randy over here driving the Raptor. Randy, what have you done to your vehicle, sir? Nothing. And there you have it, guys. Let's see how it holds up. All right, guys, now we're gonna have some talking points. So if you're a nerd, you like specs and whatnot, stay tuned. And if you don't like, just skip ahead a little bit, all right? But I'm gonna hold my phone because there's a lot to talk about. So to get started, we're gonna go into the nerdy details, features, and specs of each kit. I will say this won't be a deep dive because there are several companies that have already done table talk comparisons of all the suspensions present, suspensions present here today. Sorry about that, I don't normally talk this much. Now I emailed and I called all three companies. And to be honest, not all of them wanted to play ball, but I did the best I could, all right? So if you want to skip ahead, go ahead and skip ahead. If you want to stay put, let's start talking about each system together. Let's go. All right, first off, we're going to start with Keen. Now, Keen was pretty interesting to work with. Through email, they were awesome. But on the phone, I literally got a different answer each time I called them to ask a question. It just depended on the, the tech you got for the day. Uh, some of them didn't even know much about the suspension systems or couldn't find anything. Other ones gave me one opinion. I called again the next day, they gave me another opinion. So it was hard to get consistent answers from Keen. Now I will say that once I started to talk to someone named Tony through email, very consistent, very accurate information. He helped me a ton. So big shout out to Tony if you're watching this. Thank you. You really helped me with my Keen setup and get it all dialed in. Now Keen's on the front, we have an adjustable coilover with about 30 clicks of compression adjustment on a thinned reservoir. The front starts at a minimum of two inches of lift. That's two inches of lift over Sasquatch. So if you're running a base model without Sasquatch, that's gonna be three inches of lift. That is the lowest you can go. And from there, it's only up. Now on the front end, we have a 550 pound spring that claims 6.2 inches of shock travel. Although another shop that measured it claimed it was 6.4 inches. So take that for what you will. The claimed extension length on the front suspension is 24.65 inches and the compression length is gonna be 18.4 inches, guys. They claim that there's about 10 and a half inches of wheel travel for the Bronco on 35s on the front end. And then guys, on the rear of the Keens, we have a dual rate spring setup with a four inch tender spring at the top rated at 500 pounds, and then a 14 inch bottom spring rated at 350 pounds. The lift is stated to start at about zero inches in the rear, meaning no lift, obviously. It has an extension length of 27.066 inches and a compressed length of 18.5 inches. Now they claim about 8.566 inches of shock travel with 11.816 inches of wheel travel in the rear. Now that's a pretty specific answer. I will say though, the rear will sag if you have any sort of weight in the back. So keep that in mind if you're doing aftermarket bumpers or whatever you want, you might need to bump up that spring or just the preload to make sure you don't got no sag, but that's gonna be for a later video. Let's do the next one. All right guys, well now we have Icon here. We have two contenders with Icon, but they have very similar systems. And I'll be honest, when I called and emailed Icon, I got a flat out refusal to give me any information other than what was found on their website. So that's okay though, because we're gonna find out for ourselves what all these numbers are in the real world on some flex tests and some CTI ramps, okay? So that's okay, but they didn't give me any of that, that information. Now on their website though, they do claim 11 and a half inches of wheel travel on the front with a 35 inch tire. Keep in mind, we're running 37s for this test and 14 inches of wheel travel in the rear. They have some pretty awesome packages that include everything you need to build a Bronco on 37s as a kit. So be sure to check them out if you want some pretty cool packages. Now they claim two to three inches of lift in the front and zero inches of lift in the rear as well. And as far as Icon goes, they obviously seem to have, they claim to have the best articulation among the bunch, but they do have some rust issues. This Bronco right here, this contender right here already has some rust on one of the rear shocks. Now it is being warranted, so keep that in mind. All right, guys, now Radflow was pretty interesting. They honestly didn't seem very knowledgeable about the phone, and I talked to them at KOH as well. They had no information on the Bronco. They didn't know much at all when I spoke to them about the Bronco, had nothing to give me. 
But I actually got a hold of someone through email. He was fantastic and gave me a ton of info and spreadsheets. I love spreadsheets. So that was pretty cool. I know geeks like spreadsheets too. I'm kind of geeky sometimes, so that worked out well for me. Uh, the gentleman was super helpful. He gave me a lot of info about the front. He wouldn't give me much about the back though. But for the starts, for starters, we have the front. We have 5.77 inches of shock travel with an extended length of 24.48 inches and a compressed of 18.71 inches they do not advertise their wheel travel but they do say their spring rate on the front is 650 foot pounds that's a hundred pounds stiffer than keen mind you okay but that's pretty interesting because my keen as you'll see later sits higher than all the rest of these broncos it sits super high and then as far as their compression on the rad flows i'm told it's a needle and it just keeps spinning so we tried to test the uh, compression clicks and it just kept clicking so take that for what you will it just just keeps clicking we don't have a count. Now, as far as what they advertise for lift, on the front they say they have two to three inches of lift in the front. They wouldn't specify if that's over Sasquatch or base. I'm assuming it's over base though because as you can see here, the rad flows are the least lifted amongst all three contenders. And then on the rear, they say they start at zero inches and they go all the way up to one and a half inches of lift in the rear. Again, I don't have the spring rates or anything like that for the rear on the rad flows. They wouldn't give them to me, I asked, but that's our rad flow setup, all right? Now we're gonna talk about the Raptor. Okay guys, now we have the Raptor and it's stock. So I can't really get much information from Ford because I'm, I'm too small, they're not gonna give me much. But I can tell you this, it has Fox live valve suspension 3.0. These things are big. They have adjustments that adjust itself on the fly. That's pretty cool. They claim 13 inches of wheel travel in the front. 14 inches of wheel travel in the rear. We're gonna see how that comes up in our CTI test later on, as well as our flex ramps over here at the uh, off-road park we're currently at for this test. It's a really cool setup. It's on 37s. I think it's gonna do pretty well. Whew. Okay, guys, that was a lot of numbers and a lot of talking for me, but how do all these numbers translate to the real world? That's what we're gonna find out. So to get started, we're gonna go cut to Metal Cloak and we're gonna see how their HQ is doing what they're doing over there, and we're gonna check out their CTI ramp, get some other numbers for you before we get started on the dirt. Let's go. What's up guys and welcome to the Metal Cloak HQ. Now for those of you who do not know, Metal Cloak is coming into the Bronco game and they are coming hard. And in fact, as you can see, most of the Broncos that we're going to be using in this video that you're watching right now have Metal Cloak parts on them. So we're stoked for what they have coming, we're stoked for what they already have. It's going to be good. Alright, now Metal Cloak has something really cool. It's called the CTI trailer, guys. And we're going to be using it today in the video to show you our suspension travel head-to-head -head with the Broncos. I got Scott here from Metal Cloak, who's going to explain to us what the CTI trailer is and how it works. Scott? Hey, how's it going? My name is Scott Becker from Metal Cloak. CTI trailer was originally designed to dispel some of the false uh, scores people were getting with an RTI, which is a single wheel up a ramp. The problem with an RTI is it was only testing the opposite side of the suspension that you were going up, and wheelbase, tire pressure, all these different things could really affect what your score was, and it wasn't very safe. You know, vehicles can flop over. So the CTI takes the opposing corner wheels, brings them up to the maximum they can go up until it pulls the tire off the ground, then it drops it back down. You can see everything underneath the suspension, how it's articulating, where it's interfering, are there things that are need to be adjusted for bump stops, things like that. So it's really a learning tool. Um, a lot of people love the scores that you get. Oh, look, I got this score. It's really not so much about that. It's about making your vehicle work right and educating people on how to make their vehicles work better. Awesome, that was a perfect explanation, guys. So next up is just to throw those Broncos up and see how they do, so stay tuned. Let's check it out. Thanks, Scott. You bet. All right, guys, first up on the CTI ramp, we have Radflow representing with Brandon as the driver. Let's see how he does.
All right, rad flow's done. Number to follow. Now we're gonna do keen. So let's put the keen up on the ramp. Let's see how the keen does. Is it really the keen? All right, and up next, guys, we're going to have the Icon Bronco with David Stryker. What do you think you're going to score? I'm going to guess 540. 540. We haven't revealed the other scores yet, so you don't know what they've been scoring. Let's go. Alright guys, and last but not least, we have the Bronco Raptor going on the CTI ramp. I am stoked to try this one out personally because I think it is the first Raptor to ever be on a CTI ramp that I've seen. I could be wrong, but let's get it on the ramp, see how it does, and then we'll show you all the scores. All right, guys, the numbers are in and it's pretty crazy. Starting with the bottom, lowest score on the ramp, Keen, 520. We got a 520 on the CTI ramp. And then moving on, we have Radflow. Radflow had a 530. And then we go to Icon. Icon had a 540. Now keep in mind, every 10 points equals quarter inch. So there's only half inch difference between the bottom, which is Keen, and the top, which is Icon. Half inch difference on the CTI ramp. And then of course, not forgetting the Raptor, it blew us all out of the water. 590 guys, the Raptor scored a 590 on the ramp. That's, that's pretty impressive. So Raptor took the lead by a long shot followed by icon radflow and then king so in this test king is not the king but that's okay we're going on to the next one all right guys that's it for the metal cloak hq now it's back to prairie city all right guys we are in the radflow bronco with chris and we're going to be giving you kind of like our butt feel uh, of how it feels just going around an off-road track we got a cool dirt track out here a little windy but we'll make it work Okay guys, right now we're going about 25, 30 miles an hour on a rough dirt road. I guess the best way I could describe it is, it kind of feels just like a truck, you know? It's, it's not that bad. It's You feel the bumps, but it's firm, it's planted, it doesn't seem to wiggle or get out or do anything. So we're just going to keep doing this for a while, taking a corner, some body roll, but otherwise it seems pretty planted. Now we're picking up speed a little, alright? And we're going to start hitting about 30, 35 miles an hour. We got a little bit of rub in there, nothing too crazy, just some plastic. And as we keep going, he's going to slowly start picking up speed and kind of going over some rocks. And dude, this like, this feels great. Like it feels super smooth. We're taking some nice cambered corners, getting some speed, getting some good bumps. And it just feels very planted. I'm very impressed with Radflow so far. You're not having that jarring effect like you get on the Sasquatch. It's just cushy firmness as I, I think the best way to, to talk about it or describe it, just cushy firmness. All right, guys, we're starting to hit it a little bit more wild now. And he has that center of gravity pretty low to help him keep stabilized. So he's doing really well on the sharp cornering. Even when he's disconnected, the Bronco's staying pretty flat. But when he hits that bump, there is a little bit of bottoming out that he's experiencing on the plastic nothing too crazy though it's just plastic it'll self-clear hitting the other corner 
talking about 35 miles an hour. And now we're gonna give you our in-car impression of the jump. So he's gonna hit this jump up here at about a little over 50 miles an hour, we'll see. And here we go. All right, that was the jump, guys. Super planted. Really impressed with Radflow. Okay, guys, uh, impressions of Radflow. Planted. That's a good way to describe it. It's very planted. When it bottoms out on those jumps, it doesn't get all squirrely on you. Overall, pretty good. Impressed. Good job, Chris. Thank you. He rubs a lot, but that's just a matter of trimming. Rubbin's racing. Rubbin's racing. All right, guys, now we're in rad flow with Brandon driving. Compare this rad flow to Chris's rad flow. Remember, it had that truck like feel. Well, on this rad flow, part of the noise, the top's off. It kind of rides a lot like Icon. There was a jump at about 50 miles an hour. Coming around the corner. Really, uh, not that bad. The rear end gets a little bit more squirrely than the Raptor and the Icon, but it feels fairly planted. And honestly, a little bit of that, um, again, that truck-like feel, but a little bit more plush on this rad flow. What do you have your adjuster set to? One revolution, so it's 360 degree turn, which I believe is the same as Chris. Okay, so yeah, that is that is the same as Chris. So for whatever reason, his rad flows run a little bit plusher than Chris's, and I like it. I would rate, honestly, these rad flows as like the cowboy version of the suspension for the Broncos. They really like to go fast and take corners and play rough, and they seem to take a beating and keep going. They're gonna be a little bit more louder and creakier than the other suspensions, but overall pretty good. I'm, I'm like, all right guys, now we are in the Icon Bronco with David Stryker. And I'm gonna be honest, this is a, quite a, a different feel than the Radflow. Uh, Radflow felt more like a, a nice tough truck, but still like firm enough to not be uncomfortable, but still planted, if that makes any sense. The Icon feels much more plush, so to speak. Now keep in mind, we put them all in very similar settings for the adjusters i like the icon i like it better it feels more car like i would say than the rad flow but we're gonna see how it handles the the rocks obviously and then the jump of course as well so stay tuned for that we're gonna show you some cool footage all right so here's the in-person view of me on the jump we're gonna hit it at 68 that was pretty impressive I'm, if i say so myself that was super super composed and planted i'd rate that above the rad flow definitely um that was that was good i like that all right guys now i will say on the icon something i do notice on the corners on this dirt track the rad flow seems to have the edge there. It feels a little bit more planted in the corners, a little bit less of the body roll. And I think that's partly due to the plushness of the Icon. It makes for a much smoother ride, but when you're hitting corners hard, you're gonna get a little bit more uh, body roll, but it's it's minimal, it's almost nothing. So rad flow's got the edge there. All right, guys, now we are in the Icon number two, Tom's Icon. And this thing also feels really planted. I really like, just again, it's that plushness that you get from the Icon is just really nice to have. Really not much else to say other than uh, I would give this one a slight edge over the other Icon in just overall terms. Now this suspension is brand new, so it's a little bit newer than the other Icons. About to hit the jump, see how it feels. Very planted, no squirreliness, nothing. Just straight on through all right well first impression on the keens just hitting the track real quick about 35 miles an hour medium setting on the compression compression adjusters and it's real composed and smooth in the turns it's pretty planted not much body roll soaks up the bumps pretty well on the scale of like 
roughness compared to Icon. It definitely doesn't feel as plush, but it has a more, it has a softer, cushier feel than the Rad Flows for sure. It's not as rattly and rough. And I would say it's more composed than the Icons on the turns. It's kind of a good middle ground, I would say, you know? Go over here, hit the jump. All right, we're gonna try the bump, uh, jump now. Try a nice soft speed to start. At 65 miles an hour. Really, really composed. Really nice compression on touchdown. Very impressed with the Keens overall. Okay guys, now we are in the Raptor and we're gonna start doing some rolling around. And right off the bat, I can tell you, this thing rides good. Like, we're whipping it on the dirt track, about 40 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. This thing feels amazing. Wow. Okay. I like the Raptor, guys, in case you haven't noticed from the huge smile on my face. This thing is cornering well. It sounds good. The ride feels super planted. It's not, it's firmer than the Icon, but not as rough as the Rad Flow. So it's like a combination of soft ride, but firm enough to handle the jumps without bottoming out. No rattles, no shakes, no creaking. And it just, it hits the ground hard and stays planted and keeps going. Virtually no body roll on these corners, guys. I like the Raptor. All right, guys. Well, looking back on the testing after running in all the Broncos that were involved, I got to say, starting from the beginning, I really think the Rad Flows, they do well in cornering. They do well just like a, as a rough and ready type feel. They do feel truck-like. There was a lot of rattling from both Broncos. And they don't, it's weird that they have such a high spring rate up front. I think that contributes a lot to the overall feel of the rat flows and the rattly firm feeling that I experienced with them. The Icons, if you're looking for a very car-like suspension on road and off, Icons are that very plush, very car-like experience. If you're very picky about on road performance, Icons hands down are going to take the cake. That is if you can deal with some of the somewhat iffy quality control issues I've seen on their Broncos and their suspension components. The other thing I noticed uh, for the Kings, very planted overall, very happy with how they handled, very good middle ground between Radflow and Icon on the, uh, the comfort level. They really excel in high speed more so, high speed off road more so than they do off uh, on road, but they get a little squirrely on the jumps. 75 miles an hour is about the fastest I took it off a jump in this view, in this video. And the rear end did get a little squirrely and I want to kind of step out, which is a little scary. And then the Raptor, it, it just took the cake. The Raptor is awesome, guys. Those are my final thoughts. Uh, hit me up if you want to hear anything else about that. All right, guys, going fast is fun. But what about the rocks? Let's check it out. Let's get some measurements. Let's do some flexing. Let's get flexy over here. Come on, let's go. All right, guys, we have the Radflow Bronco up now, and we're going to flex this out right here on the pyramid. Get some numbers for you. All right, guys, the tuck numbers on the front from the top of the tire to the bottom of the metal fender liner. Two and a half inches. Two and a half inches on the front. That's the distance. On the rear for the droop, we have 14 and 5 8 inches, same measurements, top of the tire to the inner most portion, the lower portion of that metal fender. Now let's go see the other side. All right, guys, now for the droop on the front end, we have 10 and a half inches from the top of the tire to the bottom of the fender liner. And then on the back, we got 2 and a half inches, same measurement for the tuck on the rear. Now this is on the rad flows on 37, all right? All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, next up is the Raptor. Let's get to it. Yep. 
right there. All right, guys, on the Raptor at full tuck. I don't even know if it's full tuck because it took this obstacle like a champ. But seven and a half inches at full tuck on the front. Quite a bit of space left. Like I said, I don't think it's fully tucked. We just don't have the articulation for it, which shows how good it is, which is why the CTI scores help us out a lot. On the rear, 21 inches. And I can't even measure to the top of the metal fender because it's a totally different design. But I measured from the very utmost top part I could reach with the uh, tool I have, the measuring tape. 21 inches, guys. Let's check out the other side. Okay, guys, on the front of the Raptor, we have 11 and 5 eighths up front for the droop and three and a half inches on the tuck. That's what we got for the Raptor. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. All right, guys, now we have Icon. Let's check it out. All right, guys, on David's Icon, we have two and a half inches of tuck up front. We have 16 and a half inches of droop in the rear. Then going around the other side, we have two and a half inches of tuck on the rear tire. And on this front tire, we have 11 inches of droop at the wheel. All right, now we got another Radflow contender with Brandon behind the wheel. Let's see how he does. All right, for this Radflow, we got three and a quarter up front for full stuff and uh, 16 and a quarter in the rear as well so pretty good numbers okay well on this side we got droop at ten and a half up front and then on the rear we got two and a half so pretty much how they all seem to be doing around that number so pretty good two and a half inches of tuck in the rear all right guys now we're gonna do the last icon driven by Tom Let's see how he does all right with this icon again uh, too much flex guys three and a half tucked up front about 16 and a half flexed out in the back, but he wasn't able to get fully flexed. So I'm sure if he got a little more room, he'd have uh, the 17 inches that the other icon got. All right, up front, we got about 10 and a half inches of droop on this icon and two and a half inches of tuck on the rear. Very cool. All right, guys, now we're going to do the king and we're going to pop it up on that curb and we're going to see how well it does on the flex test. I'll get you the numbers right here. Let's go. All right, guys, this is the part where I tell you what the numbers are for the Keen on the flex test. I, of course, forgot my tape measure at home, but it's okay. I'm going to put the numbers of the results right here or right here or somewhere in this video screen to show you what they were because I've already uh, measured them prior to today. I just don't have those notes with me now on the same exact spot, too. So I'll put them on the screen. Sorry about that. Okay guys, so we're going to get everyone's opinion now at the end of this video about how they thought their vehicle did. Brennan, how do you think your vehicle did with the Radflows? Uh, Radflows is just getting better every day. I, everything it does, is, I'm just, I'm happy with it. Um, and Radflows has been great. Any issues I've had, I've given them a call and they've been able to support me. So yeah, no complaints. I still got a little bit of tire uh, rub to deal with, but other than that, I'm happy. Awesome. And like I said, Radflows seem, from both of them seem to have like the most truck-like feel. But in a way, I really liked it because it just felt really happy going around those corners really hard. Just kind of, I give it like a cowboy feel, so to speak. So if you're into that kind of stuff, Radflow is awesome and it did phenomenal. Okay, now we have the second Radflow with Chris here. How do you feel yours did? Pretty rad. <laughs> do you have any other thoughts besides that? Uh, no, I'm really, really happy with them. I have a little bit of rubbish. It's just plastic pieces that will eventually go away i don't really need them so he likes to run his ride low so don't fault radflow for that because no. he does have a lot of rubbing uh, me but he likes to run low he has all the way down to zero pretty much so yeah the radflow again same opinion it's i really do enjoy it. it was it was fun to ride in the radflow so thank you for letting me ride shaka no problem okay so 
We're going to talk about the icon now. Now, this is David's icon. Can you give me your thoughts after today and jump in it for the first time? Yeah, you know, feel pretty good with it. I'm enjoying the flex in it. I like the way it was riding on the on the road course. It kind of has smooth, good feel to it. Um, opportunities, I'm not happy with the tires. I can tell that already. They're just not having the bite on them that, I look, that I'm looking for, and I think the sidewalls are a little too soft on it. And the clanking, we just haven't figured that out yet coming out of the rear part of the suspension. Something's binding somewhere. We're just getting a little bit of noise on it, and at times actually a loud noise. So once we get that figured out, there's really nothing on this I would look down upon with it. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of clanking in the rear, and I think it's just something binding or something loose back there, but it's not necessarily Icon's fault, I hope. Uh, and then my only other thoughts from riding passenger, the Icon's were the plushest ride by far out of the three aftermarket suspensions. They did, they did really well. A little bit more body roll and less uh, planted on the corners, but you take those jumps and it comes down and just feels cush the whole way through. It was really nice. If you like on-road feel, if you like that, that more of a car ride, icon's good for you and they also flexed more than all the other broncos as we saw from the aftermarket suspension side which is great for the rocks yeah that's my thoughts on this one all right and we got the other icon now represented by tom tom your thoughts um i really like the icons when i put them on they were immediately more comfortable than the stock uh, badlands suspension um Handling in the mountains at high speeds is fine. Handling here, being able to dial them up, dial them down, perfect. Awesome. And again, my thoughts on the Icon, very similar to the other one I drove in. Just that plush feeling, which is really nice. Very planted on the jumps. It doesn't rub pretty much at all. You had a tiny bit of rubbing on this one. The other one was no rubbing. Again, that can be solved with some self-clearancing. With 37s, you're just going to have that. Just got to do a lot of work to mitigate that. And I'm sure he'll get his sorted out. So... Thanks for coming out, Tom. Appreciate it. All right, well, my thoughts on Keen. Handling, phenomenal. Body roll, minimal. It eats up the corners for breakfast. I'm not biased at all. No, seriously, I'm not. Um, and then for the jumping, super planted as well. I will say at higher speeds, 74 miles an hour, it got a little squirrely in the rear end. On these Keens, for some reason, that rear end, it, it wants to get out a little more play, a little more than the Icon, a little more than the rad flow. Uh, but I'm very happy with it. It's a good balance between the plushness of the Icon, but the firmness and handling of the Radflow. A good middle ground, so to speak. And uh, yeah, so that's my thoughts on Keen. I will okay, see. guys, and now we have the Raptor with Randy. Randy, what are your thoughts? I love it. Um, I'm just, I've had a lot of thinking about whether to modify a Bronco or go with the Bronco Raptor. And I went with the choice of going with the Raptor and I don't regret it, although a little bit more money. What would you change? Ooh, I, I wouldn't change nothing. Nothing, nothing, he wouldn't change nothing. And guys, my thoughts on the Raptor, the jumps, the the cornering, the, the rough road rides, the body roll, the, um, the articulation, it scored in my opinion way better than all the others. Guys, the, the Raptor really blew it out of the park way beyond my expectations. I'm extremely happy with it. It's a good blend between that truck ride, but still that plush feel. It just kind of all blends together in one giant package and it just, I mean, you hear the exhaust note and you just fall in love. It's great. So get a Raptor or not. Now, something I want you guys to keep in mind is shocks, whether it's Keen, Radflow, Icon, ADS, Fox, you name it, you pick your shock manufacturer. Shocks are like a, a fine suit. Imagine you go to a, a nice warehouse, men's warehouse, something like that. You have a nice, fine suit. You purchase that suit for $500, finest quality material. You put it on, you look ugly because it doesn't fit you. You have to get it tailored, right? Same with the Keen, same with Icon, same with Radflow. You get a nice, expensive coilover, a nice shock, and the ride isn't what you expected because of aftermarket stuff you've added or different things you've done with your, your tires, your wheels, your, your gear, your overland setup, your off-road setup, what, what have you. You have to tune the shock sometimes. So keep in mind, you might spend a lot of money on a shock. I won't say how much because my wife's behind the camera, but you spend a lot of money on a shock and if the ride isn't what you expect, don't blame the shock right off. You might just need to go see a tune. Again, future video, wink, wink, AccuTune. I'll show you something coming out soon. And that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to show you guys with the suspension review. 
it's pretty cool everything did phenomenal i was impressed with everything i'd run anything on my personal bronco honestly if i personally had to choose between all three of them for a car ride icon for that cool cowboy feel where you can just mob in and you don't feel like you're gonna hurt anything rad flow and a little bit of a roughness and then the keen is just a nice blend i i like it i'm not biased towards it because i don't really care kind of what shocks i run i just get what's available and that was available at the time but yeah overall pretty good all right guys thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it all in all this very close tie between all of them this is not a review like i said earlier to say hey get this one or get this one it's just showing you how they feel our opinions our conclusions our testing to help you make a better choice about what type of suspension will work best for you or if it's just better to get a raptor or maybe even stay stock the choice is up to you guys it's your bronco build it how you want stay tuned for some more videos about some other types of suspension some tailgate supports how to fit 37s properly and a bunch more. Thank you for watching, have a good day. Keep in mind, different mods, weights, and setups can offer your Broncos. I messed up. Keep in mind that different mods, weights, and setups can alter your Broncos' performance.